Let's discuss the latest projected snow totals for this weekend, the record-breaking cold for the southeast, and our teleconnections continue to signal a very cold start to winter for the east. It's November 7th, 2025. Let's get into the weather updates. When I said record-setting cold, I meant it. Look at the southeast as we get into the beginning of next week. We have lots of records that could be broken. We're talking about from North Carolina up into southern Appalachia, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, Louisiana, Florida. All of these areas could see record lows for this time of year. And by the way, this is not the feels like these are the actual temperatures. We're seeing freezing air down into southern Louisiana, the mid to low 20s from Mississippi out through Georgia. Temperatures could drop close to freezing in Tampa, and we're not even at the midway point of November. So when you hear record setting cold, it's not just to get your attention. We're expecting this to break records. Now we're going to take a look at some of our future reflectivity just to see how models have adjusted overnight. Here's our latest 06C run from the European model. We do have a low pressure that is moving just north of the Great Lakes region. As we move forward in time throughout the day, this cold air is going to begin sinking into the northern plains and upper midwest and here's our shortwave trough that just moved in from the pacific that is ejecting across the plains and then across the great lakes region this is what's going to try to meet up with this cold air from the north and produce our snowstorm so here we go getting into saturday evening that shortwave trough that low pressure is diving to the south now it doesn't quite think this cold air is going to be in place yet for places like des moines out through chicago and milwaukee but it does think we're going to get some back end snow and this is just one model run i'm going to go through a few so here we go getting into sunday morning we see that low pressure system System moving off into the northeast, bringing a lot of cold rain. Some models do see a little of this as snow in inner New England, but right now it looks like cold rain. This will likely turn to snow though. You can see this very cold air, this upper level low beginning to sink in as we get into Sunday night, Monday morning, and all that cold air is going to be driving across the Great Lakes. What happens when you get a bunch of cold air driving across warmer waters beneath it? Well, you get lake effect snow, and that is why the European model has consistently seen, and if this happens, we got to give the European model its credit because a lot of models have not seen this back end snow but the euro does think we're going to get some lake effect snow activated down into chicago potentially northwestern indiana down into ohio and potentially northwestern pa and then western upstate new york as we get this northeasterly wind activated now the euro also sees some moisture available on the back end of this to potentially put down a dusting to an inch to an inch and a half stretching from eastern illinois down through kentucky maybe even northern tennessee and it's going to try to put some snow up and down the appalachian range there are some suggestions that if this is late enough at night if it's cold enough some of this snow actually may try and fall on the eastern side of the Appalachian range meaning who knows maybe you get a small dusting in Charlotte or in western Virginia we'll see it's not going to be much if you do get it but there is some potential for just a little bit of a coating or dusting of snow in some of these areas east of the Appalachian mountain range taking a look at the Rufus model you can see as we get through today into the afternoon and evening hours here comes our storm set up through Tennessee Kentucky potentially northern Mississippi and Alabama up through West Virginia and Ohio now I do think on the northern end of this this is mostly just going to be general thunderstorms but we do have to watch out through portions like i said of the tennessee and mississippi valley a lot of this moisture is going to be pushing off into the northeast so it could be a wet friday evening up there and then here comes our shortwave trough like i said our low pressure diving down through the northern plains and the rufus does think we may get enough cold air down here to put a little bit of snow through iowa maybe des moines and then this system begins to move through the great lakes region and you can see where the cold air starts to hit this system so the rufus suggests maybe a little bit of snow on the front end of this in chicago detroit northern indiana northern ohio the storm continues to move off into the northeast and then here comes that northeasterly flow really that northerly flow and when i say northerly i mean winds coming from the north moving south that cold air is going to run over the great lakes and again the rufus model stops here but it does suggest it's going to produce some lake effect snow and maybe try to drag that down into portions of the ohio valley so a lot of these models are starting to get on board with the european which i think is interesting getting into our nam 12k what do we see kind of a similar outcome it actually agrees with the rufus potentially a little bit of snow into iowa and then maybe Maybe again a little snow from Chicago to Detroit as this moves through. I still think you're going to have to wait for the system to move out and that cold air to sink in 12 to 24 hours after this initial push of moisture. But here we go. That storm moves off to the northeast and we're getting some flurries flying around here in the Great Lakes region. Although the NAM 12K is not as aggressive with that snow after the system moves off to the northeast. And by the way, as this is happening, you can see there's just a ridge building out out west. The weather's pretty calm. It's pretty dry. But I will tell you as we move forward in time and as we get through next week, we'll see another low pressure system slamming the west coast building up lots of snow up in the mountains and you'll have cold rainy conditions along the coast but again it's likely to be above average and dry for a little bit here but anyways here's the canadian and i wanted to show you this because the canadian is starting to align with the euro it agrees that this cold air is going to sink in and we are going to get a lot of lake effect snow trying to be pulled off the great lakes and we're going to have some moisture 
availability for Kentucky, Tennessee, the Appalachian Mountains, Indiana, Ohio, maybe even we get a little snow on the eastern side of the Appalachian Mountains. The Canadian agrees with the Euro. And this has been an interesting development because we went through three, four days of the Euro showing all this snow down here in the Ohio Valley and all these other models saying it's not going to happen. Well, they're starting to agree with the Euro. When this snowstorm's all said and done, I'm really interested to see if the Euro was right the whole time because the Euro always ends up being right, or I'd say 70 to 80% of the time ends up being the correct model at the end of the day. So we'll see if that trend continues. All right, here's our national blend of models. It takes all of our models and mashes them together and averages out where it thinks the snow could be. And obviously, Southern Minnesota, Central to Northern Iowa, you've got a decent chance here. Southern Wisconsin, we're looking at Northeastern Illinois, most of Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Northeastern Tennessee, and then running up here through the Appalachian Mountain Range, Inner New England. And then actually, the national blend is hinting at a good amount of snow here along the western shore of Michigan and potentially four to five inches into Chicago. I think that might be the high end, but who knows if that lake effect snow does activate and it is moving in the right direction here. So we get that kind of banding over the city. You could end up having some high totals in Chicago. It's definitely possible. Quickly running through temperatures again. Here's as we get into this weekend. Pretty warm down in the southeast for Friday. Saturday, pretty warm as well. Things start to change Sunday. You can see that cold air beginning to push in from the northwest. Although if you're down there really far in the southeast, you're going to have to wait until Monday. There's that collapse of cold air really far down into the southeast. And then that air begins to move out farther east towards the eastern seaboard as we get into Tuesday morning. And here's where we get some record temperatures. You know where you live. Look at this map. It could get cold. Up in the northeast, really along the coast, that real push of cold air doesn't arrive until really late Sunday into early Monday morning. Here it comes. Our coldest temperatures will likely be around Tuesday as well. Look at this. We're getting temperatures out there. These are our feels like in the mid to low 20s along the coast. And then if you go inland, we actually are getting down into the teens and single digits in some areas. Across the central U.S., here's Friday. Here's as we get into Saturday. And then as we get into Sunday, there's that cold air collapse. And Monday is where Texas out through Georgia is going to start to see that cold air collapsing. And like I said, we could see feels like temperatures stretching from Dallas, Fort Worth out to Atlanta below freezing. And to not leave the West out of this, here we go. Low elevation. It's going to be hot. We have some ridging out here. We know this time of year, it's always cold up in the mountains. But as you can see down there in these low elevation areas, we're still 60s, 70s, 80s in some cases. All right. So we know what's happening in the short range. What happens after this snowstorm moves out? We got some ridging out West and we move through now next week. Well, models are suggesting that we're going to continue this polar flow out through the upper Midwest and then through the Northeast. You can see this 540 line that's continuing to barrage the Northern Plains, potentially Great Lake region and Northeast. So a continued flow of cold air out here and moisture. Now, if this dips down a little bit more, we could actually end up seeing a lot of snow out through this region over the next couple of weeks. But you can see it's really towed in the line here. Our Euro actually likes our freezing line a little bit farther to the South here if we were to move forward. And we're continuing to see clipper after clipper after clipper try to dive through the upper Midwest Great Lake region and New England. So I think it's going to be pretty wet and cold out here for a lot of us in the really upper Midwest through the Great Lake region and Northeast as we move through the next couple of weeks. And we could get a lot of precipitation. Some is cold rain, maybe some is ice, maybe some is snow. We'll have to see as we get a little bit closer. Last but not least, our Arctic Oscillation is looking like it wants to stay negative through November and potentially the beginning of December. So what does a negative Arctic Oscillation mean? I talk about it a lot, but that's when your polar jet is kind of getting slowed and disturbed up there over the Arctic. Typically, you have some high pressures or higher heights moving into that region or some Arctic warming. And what that does is as that polar jet slows, some of that cold air spills down to the south. This just suggests cold air at much lower latitudes than it should be this time of year. And depending on what you have with your PNA and NAO and WPO, EPO, all these oscillations, that can tell you where that cold air is likely to be. Is it likely to be more central, western, or eastern? Negative NAO pattern, this suggests that cold air is mainly going to be out east, as well with the negative EPO and WPO. So we'll see. Again, looking cold for the east to start off winter. When will this pattern change? We may see the second half of winter get much colder for the west, warmer for the east. We'll have to see. I'm going to continue to follow these trends and keep you updated. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to follow or subscribe and hit that notification bell. So you're notified every single time I go live or post my videos. I do post every single day and I go live every single day as well to try and answer all of your weather related questions. I also have an awesome weather discord. The link is down in the description so you can become part of the climate crew. It is completely free to join right now. It won't be forever, but definitely join tons of weather enthusiasts and live daily updates. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video or the next live.